Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how to carry out a hypothesis test and a confidence interval for paired numerical data. Here's our problem. In the early 1990s, researchers in the UK collected data on traffic flow, number of shoppers, and traffic accident related emergency room admissions on Friday the 13th and the previous Friday, Friday the 6th. The distributions of traffic accident related emergency room admissions for six such pairs of dates, along with summary statistics, are shown below. A. Conduct a hypothesis test to evaluate if there is a difference between the average numbers of traffic accident related emergency room admissions between Friday the 6th and Friday the 13th. So in order to structure our response, we're going to use this I4C framework that stands for identify, choose, check, calculate, and conclude. So first we want to identify the hypotheses and we'll test those at the alpha is 5% significance level. What we want to notice at the outset is that we have data for Friday the 6th. We also have data for Friday the 13th. And then we have data for the paired differences. And so we really have paired data here that we want to take advantage of. And so our null claim is going to say that the mean of the paired differences is zero, which is to say that there is no difference between traffic accident related emergency room admissions between the 6th and the Friday the 6th and Friday the 13th. The alternate claim is that the mean of the differences is not zero, which is to say that there is a difference. So our alternate claim is two-sided. And remember that our hypotheses are about the unknown parameters. We have a small set of sample data, but our hypotheses are about the unknown parameters. Now we're going to choose. We're going to do a test on the differences. And so we're looking at the mean of that. So we're going to do a one sample t-test for a mean. This is the same one sample t-test for a mean that you're probably already familiar with. But we'll be doing this one sample t-test for a mean on the paired differences. Check. We need to check that the conditions are met. So we need a random sample of differences or a matched pairs experiment. And here we'll have to assume that the six years are like a random sample. And so we'll keep that uh, consideration in mind in terms of assessing the um, validity of our conclusions. Next, we need that we have at least 30 differences or the population of differences is nearly normal. So looking at the bottom histogram, again, we don't have a lot of data. But what we can note is that the distribution of sample differences is approximately symmetric. So we'll consider the assumption that the population of differences are nearly normal to be reasonable. Now we're ready to calculate our t statistic, which will be the point estimate minus the null value divided by the standard error of the estimate. Our point estimate for the true mean of the differences is going to be the sample mean difference. And the sample mean difference is given here as negative 3.33. Our null value for the mean difference is given in H sub O. That's 0. And then we're going to divide by the sample standard deviation here of 3.01. And that's over the square root of n, so over square root of 6. Our degrees of freedom is the number of differences minus 1. We have 6 differences, so we have 5 degrees of freedom. And now we're ready to calculate our test statistic and p-value. This is a two-sided test, so we're going to want the area in both tails. We could also do a shortcut on the calculator if you prefer. And so we'll go here on the TI to stat tests. This is a one sample t-test. So we're going to go to t-test, t-test. And we don't have all the data exactly, but we have the summary stats. Our mu sub zero, which is mu that's hypothesized under h sub zero, our null value here is zero. The sample mean for the differences is negative 3.33. Sample standard deviation for the differences is 3.01. N for the differences is six. And we're using a two-sided alternate. And now we're ready to calculate. And so we get our t test statistic. And we get our p-value immediately below that. So we can record those values. <clears throat> and 
And now we're ready for our conclusion. Our p-value is less than alpha, which we had set to 0.05. So because our p-value is less than alpha, we're going to reject H sub O. And if we reject H sub O, then we do have evidence for H sub A. So in this case, we're saying we have evidence that there is, on average, a difference in the numbers of traffic accident-related emergency room admissions between Friday the 6th and Friday the 13th. Okay, so now let's do a similar thing, but now we'll do a confidence interval for the mean difference so that we can get an interval of all reasonable values for this difference. So we'll use the same framework here. Identify, choose, check, calculate, conclude. First, we want to identify what it is that we're estimating and the confidence level. So we're estimating a mean of differences. So you notice the subscript there is a difference. Um, and I chose to write it in like this so that it's very clear what order we're taking the difference in. We're doing 6th minus 13th. So we're estimating mu sub 6 minus 13th, the average difference between traffic accident related emergency room admissions on Friday the 6th and Friday the 13th at the 95% confidence level. Okay, so we're going to choose a one sample t interval. So a one sample t interval for a mean. And we're going to do it on the paired differences. Check. The conditions for the one sample t interval are the same as for the one sample t test. So we've already addressed those previously. And now we're ready to calculate. So we're going to do the point estimate, plus or minus the critical value times the standard error of the estimate. Previously, you saw that the point estimate is going to be the sample average for the differences. And the standard error is the sample sta uh, standard deviation of the differences over square root of n diff. And so we can plug those values in. We know we have 5 degrees of freedom. And so now we need to calculate t star, the critical value. So we'll want to pull up a t table. And we're going to go to row 5 for degrees of freedom of 5. We're going to look at row 5 and column that corresponds to 95% confidence. And we see that t star is 2.571. So we'll plug that in for our t star. 2.571. And now we're ready to evaluate our confidence interval. So again, we can evaluate this, or we could do a shortcut on the calculator. So we would go to stat, test. This is a one sample t interval, so we would go to t interval. t interval, our summary statistics are already plugged in, so I can just do calculate. And this will give me the lower and upper bound. And so let's record that lower and upper bound. And now we're ready for our conclusion. OK, so first let's interpret the interval. We're 95% confident that the true parameter of interest is between this lower and upper bound. And so we're saying that we're 95% confident that the true mean difference in traffic accident related emergency room admissions between Friday the 6th and Friday the 13th is between negative 6.49 and negative 0.17. And so now what can we conclude? Well, we notice that the entire interval is negative. So we have to look back to the order that we did the difference. We did 6 minus 13th. So if the entire interval is negative, this is indicating that we think this one is larger than this one to make that difference negative. So because the entire interval is negative, we have evidence that there are more traffic accident related emergency room admissions on Friday the 13th than on Friday the 6th at the 95% confidence level. Okay, and part C, the conclusion originally uh, of the original study states Friday the 13th is unlucky for some. The risk of hospital admission as a result of transport accident may be increased by as much as 52%. Staying at home is recommended. Do you agree with this statement? Explain your reasoning. Well, what we can observe is that we do have evidence that there are more on Friday the 13th, but the way that they are phrasing this, it's implying that there's some kind of causal relationship. And we know that to prove a causal relationship, we need a well-designed experiment. And we do not have that here. So. Because this is not an experiment, we do not have evidence that there's a causal relationship. So this does not imply that driving on a Friday the 13th causes someone to be at higher risk. So we're going to have to disagree with that statement. 
Okay, that's it for this video. You can find more free resources on openintro.org.